Today, all 50 states are lifting restrictions in some form as they move towards reopening businesses and public spaces shuttered by the coronavirus. But with record unemployment and the next phase, phase of coronavirus relief legislation stalled in Congress, states are stuck fighting the economic fallout from COVID-19 alone. Joining us now is Democratic Senator from Colorado, Michael Bennett. Uh, Senator, it is always good to see you. You have a new plan that you're putting out or a new legislation entitled the Health Force. Tell us what it is. Right. Thanks, Katie. It's great to see you as well, and I hope you're doing well. Um, what the Health Force would do is create hundreds of thousands of jobs for Americans, many of them young Americans that are unemployed, to do the contact tracing that's necessary to, when we have a vaccine, administer the vaccine, to, to train people in 190 to 100 hours to get a decent paying job on the, on the front line of the healthcare crisis that we face. And my view is that there's no way to open up the economy unless we have something like this in place, because otherwise we're just gonna end up closing it again. Every day that the economy's closed costs us $20 billion. So it seemed to me that some investment to create the kind of uh, health force that we need to, to make sure that we can do the contact tracing that other countries that are open today as you and I talk to each other on a video screen would be of use. You and Gillibrand are sponsoring this or creating this legislation. Have you spoken to any Republicans about whether they're gonna support it? Um, I'm glad to have Kirsten Gillibrand on board. She's a ferocious force and we've got some good Democratic support. I think in the end, there are going to be Republicans that are going to want to support this because every single public health agency that I know in Colorado, many of which are in uh, rural Republican counties in my state, they, they were underfunded by 60 percent before COVID happened. They know they don't have the resources to do this and they're desperate uh, to have this infrastructure in place so that once the economy is open and it can actually stay open. So I'm hopeful we'll have Republican support just as I'm hopeful that we'll have Republican support on reforming the small business program along the lines that Senator Todd Young, a Republican from Indiana, and I have proposed, and to provide funds to our state and local governments who are just getting massacred uh, in, the, in, in the context of this COVID crisis. Senator, um, I, I have to say, it's my understanding that people have brought a version of this idea up into the West Wing and it has not been embraced. I don't understand why. I mean, here's a time of crisis. You look back at our history in times of crisis, one of, one of the ways we've answered the call is to tap into the citizenry, make them feel a part of this. Uh, this to me is, it, 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 it seems like, uh, frankly, low hanging fruit to get everybody on board on something like this. But there seems to be some allergy in the West Wing to nationalizing anything, whether it's testing or whether it's this. Do you have any insight as to why? Yeah, because their response is utterly incoherent. I mean, anybody with an interest in trying to do something other than play politics with the very difficult challenge that we confront of how do you open an economy again and right. protect the public health at the same time and keep that economy open, you got to do more than one thing. You can't just open the economy and hope for the best, and you can't just leave the economy closed uh, expecting the worst. And you've got to put people on the front lines in this country. But we've had no strategy, Chuck, you know that. The president had no yeah. strategy on a personal protective equipment. And what did that create? It meant every single hospital in America, including, it should be said, the Veterans Administration Hospital in every single state who had the benefit of no national strategy had to compete with every other hospital for the exact same equipment. President Trump said, that's good. You'll discover what the price is. That's ridiculous. What we discovered was we created a bunch more scarcity and drove prices up. It's the same thing that's going to happen if we don't have uh, an infrastructure in place to, 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 do, to, as you say, to re-engage the American people. We are one nation under God for at least one reason, and that is to deal with a global pandemic like this. Yeah. Let me ask uh, you this, because I, I can hear it in your voice, and I'm curious. Um, normally, in a time of crisis, you start to see some bipartisanship pop up, but we're in a presidential election year. It's getting awfully close. 
you don't have a Republican sponsor to this, which to me actually surprises me. But that also tells me how bad is the polarization inside the Senate that you can't get a public co-sponsor uh, from the well, other look, side of the aisle. The and something that, my, to me, is above well, politics. Yeah, I mean, I hope we will get a Republican co-sponsor. Uh, to me, what, what's disappointing to me about the Senate is we're spending our week here uh, uh, having four votes on district court judges. We're doing almost no pandemic oversight, and we're not yet working on the next bill. But it is true, in fairness, that we had two big votes in a row in the Senate that were unanimous, that were completely bipartisan, yeah. that reflected the urgent the urgency of what people are hearing from their constituents. And I think they're still going to be hearing from that. If you look at uh, how serious the challenges are of our small businesses, the cash flow that th th they have two weeks, some of them have cash flow left, some less than that. You've got state and local governments. My state of Colorado had to cut $493 million today in its higher ed budget. And people all over the country are going to start laying off cops and firefighters. You know, this is not a usual drill for Congress just to wait around until we're forced to act. We should be coming together in a bipartisan way, as we did on the earlier versions of this uh, bill, do the right thing for the American people, and, and then fight it out at the polls. Senator, you and I had a conversation, or many conversations, about big structural change uh, when you were running for president. And I'm wondering, after this pandemic, or during it now, are you reconsidering your look at, at universal health care or <laughs> something along those lines? Are those sort of proposals that, that were big and bold um, during the presidential campaign that got put a bit on the back burner, do you think that they have a, are you looking at them differently today? I, I believe that the proposals that I made during the presidential campaign, which were not uh, uh, widely paid attention to, I will admit, were the biggest, boldest and best proposals that anybody made. Nobody else made a proposal <laughs> to cut childhood poverty by 40 percent in one year in America. I did. I believe strongly in universal health care then, and I believe in it now. I just don't think Bernie's plan is the way of ever getting there. And I'm so desperate for universal health care that I think we should be fighting for something else that we can actually get done. Not because it's a small idea, but we can actually do it because we can build support with the American people because 70 percent of the American people support the ideas I put forward on the campaign trail, not 30 percent of Democrats. If we're willing to do that, I think we're going to start winning races in the in the states we need to have a convincing majority in the Senate again. We'll hold on to the House. We'll win the presidency and we will be able to build momentum for a progressive agenda that ends childhood poverty in this country, that creates a, an education system that's driving economic opportunity for people and a health care system that works for everybody in the country so people have primary care. I don't need to tell people that the pandemic revealed for me the inequality in this country. I have believed that we had profound inequality for decades and anybody who spent any time in a school with poor kids in this country know how deeply unfair our society is. So nobody needs to lecture me about the need for structural change. Nobody needs to lecture me about uh, whether we should make progress. I'm committed to what I ran on. and I believe that will deliver for Senator. the American people the kind of change that we need to have a democracy that can be sustained into the 21st century. That's what's at stake here. And we got to obviously we got to win these elections to begin with, not just the presidency, but the Senate as well. Senator Michael Bennett, not a lecture, just a question, just a question, going back to some of our earlier I know, but I remember, Thank Katie, you so when you asked me the campaign, why can't we just have Medicare for all? And my point is, well, we I need was universal curious. I was curious what your opinion on, on it was. We need universal health care coverage. We I'll moderate this debate if you'd like. Hearts and minds yeah. of the American people. I'm on your side. Senator, and then we got to make Michael more change Bennett. after that. Thanks for having me, Thank guys. Thank you so much Good for joining you. us. Let's uh, <laughs> let's always continue these conversations. I love having them. Uh, Chuck, over to you.